Hello, folks. So tonight I am going after the Medusa Nebula, and it's probably the last narrowband target I'm going to capture this season. And after this, I'm going to be taking off my reducer so I can slow my scope down and start capturing galaxies. And uh, I started on some galaxies, but I think I want to start over and collect better data. But anyway, let, let's get let's get back to Medusa. And right now, my mean readout is 936. I'm capturing oxygen, and that's a bit high. It, the skies are not great right now, but you know I'm going to take it. Whatever I can get tonight, maybe I can even finish this target. Um, I've already captured around six hours or so of HA, and it seems like a bright nebula, at least of HA. Uh, let's see, uh, and uh, uh, oxygen, I'm capturing it at 75, gain 75, offset 15. I captured um, HA at unity gain, 139.21, and I'm doing four minute exposures for each. And this is what one frame looks like. Oh. Well, why did I always do that? Every time I close something in Sequence Generator Pro, it bumps me to PixInsight. Okay, but it, I was playing around with the sun today. These images kind of stink. <laughs> it, sun was not cooperating. It, things don't always go well, and some stuff you're not supposed to see, and this is stuff you weren't supposed to see. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, that's what one sub looks like for Medusa. It's kind of faint, but at least it's there for oxygen. So if I've got some data, I know when I stack it. Um, hopefully I'm going to have some, some good data there. And let's take a look at PhD2. Um, I'm pointing south, and I'll settle for, for a tote RMS of 0.75. Um, that, that's not too bad pointing south. Um, usually when I'm pointing north, I'm, I'm in the 0.5 range quite a bit, but um, I'm certainly happy with uh, 0.76 in this location. And, uh, well, that, that's all I've got to share for now. I'm, I'm hoping I can finish this tonight, and I'll see you later. Hooray! I actually finished the nebula. I can't believe it. It seems like it's been a long time, but this is my last narrowband target of the season. And let me show you what I've got here. Now, Granted, I, I, I only had around a little over 10 hours in all on this target, and I see people going over 20 and 30 hours. Like, jeez, I mean, I'm, it surprises me. It's kind of a fairly bright target. They must be going after the really faint stuff around it, but, you know, I, I don't have enough time and enough clear skies to do that much. But anyway, this is a little over six hours of HA data, and um, this is not normal where I seem to have this vignetting going on in the corners, but I was capturing this data under extreme conditions. When I have snow on the ground, I go through this every year, but when there's snow on the ground, it absolutely amplifies the light pollution. And now I have light being reflected on me from the ground up. And my mean readout was jacked up uh, almost in some cases almost double than what I normally see for HA. So, and I think that is why I'm seeing this and my, my flats couldn't compensate for it. But the the center area was still good and I liked the, the, the nebulosity I picked up. In fact, I liked it enough where I didn't even run a DBE or um, ABE. I didn't do any background extraction. Um, all I did was uh, um, I just uh, ran a histogram on it to make it nonlinear, and then it was ready for the combine. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't even bother to run the deconvolution, which makes your your stars tighter. Maybe if I was maybe lazy, but I kind of liked how the stars looked anyway. They could have been better. Deconvolution will, will definitely make them tighter. I, I've been skipping that step a lot because it, it, it's quite a few steps to do, but um, I was pretty happy with the, the, the way the stars look anyway. So that's my HA data. So no extra processing before the combine, except for this the, the cropping. And uh, let me show you my oxygen. Now the snow was gone by the time I captured oxygen. So this is typically how my oxygen normally looks with this brightness around it like that. Um, 
And it's interesting, uh, you, you've seen this many times before with this brightness, and Doug, who's about maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes up the road from me, was trying his astronomic 6M filters on narrowband targets, so then that's the same filter I have, and he was getting the brightness. And he said, no way am I dealing with this. So he actually switched to Astrodon 3NM, and it gave him a much cleaner edge-to-edge -edge picture. So now I'm thinking for um, maybe next Nebula season, maybe I should just switch to Astronomic Oxygen 3NM. Although I have to say on this picture, a DBE did fix it edge to edge, so that makes me sort of lean away from spending all that money on Astrodon. So, um, anyway, so that's 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 how that looked, and this is um, after I I processed it. And what I did on this is I did run a dynamic background extraction on it, and then um, I used a histogram to make it nonlinear, and then I just ran a little bit of denoise. And I used curves to brighten up that nebulosity a bit, and then it was ready for the combine. So, and I also skipped the deconvolution on this data too. And let me show you how the data combined. So I used the SHO AIP script, which I've shown in other videos. And this is pretty much exactly how I would have expected it to look. That's that's unusual. Usually, I'm more surprised. <laughs> but yeah, this is what this is what I would have expected. And to me, it looks like wow, this is going to be pretty easy to process because uh, I wasn't expecting much more than this. And that's what I came up with. And so what I did is, uh, uh it, it didn't require a lot of processing. I, I denoised it a bit. I sharpened it a bit. I played with the colors. Tried to add a little more star color. Um, and uh, I didn't run any morphological transformation to shrink the stars. Like I said, I think the stars were fine in this picture. And um, what else? Uh, that, that's pretty much it. I, it was uh, one of the more easier targets I've ever processed. Um, either that or I've just forgotten some steps since because it's been so long. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And... Um, there's a lot of red in this picture, and I, I think some people might confuse that for gradients, but I think this is just some very light hydrogen data floating around, so I didn't try to fix any of that. In fact, uh, I, I, I tried to leave that as in there as much as I could. So, um, what do you guys think? I, I think this is ready for prime time. I'll probably stick it on Astrobin, send it out, even send it out for a NASA APOD submission, but, you know, I don't have hopes for this one, for that. A lot of that APODs usually have a lot more pizzazz than, than this one, but I'll send it out anyway because you never know. All right. Um, thanks for watching, guys. That's all I got. I will see you later.